Okay, so welcome to part two of this video on equivalence classes. Okay, uh, so uh, what we defined in the previous video was we had a, a set and uh, we had defined an equivalence relation on it. So uh, we defined a relation between elements and it obeyed a bunch of axioms such as reflexivity, symmetry, and transitivity. And what we now want to show is that the set, uh, let's say the set um, of all equivalence classes, um, let's say x, where little x is an element of s, actually forms a partition of uh, the set S. And you might think that's a bit odd, um, because surely there's going to be far too many equivalence classes. Uh, but the fact is that most of these equivalence classes, lots of them, sorry, lots of them are going to be equivalent, just the right number, basically. They're going to be exactly the same, basically. And the reason is uh, that um, if we, say, take an element little x in, a, in the set uh, big S, and uh, define its equivalence class, well, work out its equivalence class, which is this set here, let's say, and um, and then what we want to do, uh, and then in that equivalence class there is another element, let's say little y, then basically for any other element in this equivalence class, so a specific example being this little y, if you generate the equivalence class of little y, it will generate you exactly the same set basically. So the uh, bunch of elements that little y is related to is exactly the same as the bunch of elements that uh, little x is related to. So how can I prove that? So let's say if little x is related to some arbitrary element z, so let's say z is some arbitrary other ele uh, arbitrary element in equivalence class of x, so let's say z is an element of the equivalence class of um, x, okay? Uh, now what we want to show is that that implies that y is related to z, but this is very easy just with the transitive property because y is related to x because we know that because y is an element of the equivalence class of x uh, and x is related to z so that implies that y is related to z as well so that implies that all elements of z which are an element of the equivalence class of x are also elements of the equivalence class of y so it implies that the equivalence class of x is contained within the equivalence class of y Okay, um, so what we now want to prove is that uh, you can it's an actual equivalence here. They are equal, not just containment. And we want to prove that there cannot be another element uh, outside of um, the equivalence class of X, um, which is in the equivalence class of Y. So let's say there was some, uh, what element should I use? Let's say, that there, let's say there exists a B, which is an element of the equivalence class of Y, uh, such that B is not an element of the equivalence class of X. So we're doing a proof by contradiction now. We're supposing that exactly what we want to disprove is true. Okay, uh, then it would imply that Y is related to B. Uh, not, nothing too difficult there. If B is an element of the equivalence class of Y, then Y is related to B by definition. Okay, um, now uh, since X is related to Y, um, what we know is that by the transitive property, x must then be related to b, because if x is related to y and y is related to b, it would imply x is related to b. So this would give us very blatantly that b is an element of the equivalence class of x, which contradicts our initial assumption, basically. So there cannot be any elements uh, outside of the equivalence class of x, uh, which are um, all elements of the equivalence class of y. So basically, the equivalence class of x is actually equal to the equivalence class of y. So if we look back at this picture, all the elements of the equivalence class of x are going to be, um, well, all of them here are, if you generate their equivalence classes, so pick any arbitrary one, if you generate its equivalence class, it is going to be this entire thing. It's going to be the exact same set. So all of these are related to every other element in here, and they are related to no element that is outside of it. Because if they were related to an element outside of it, it would imply that x was also related to that element, and therefore that element would be in the equivalence class of x. So that proves that these form nice partitions. Now what we need to prove, uh, well, what we need to prove next is that uh, every element somewhere is going to be in one of these equivalence classes. Okay, so let's do that now. Um, so it's quite simple. If you have a set S, if you have a set S, and you have a little element, let's say X, in here, 
then x is going to be an element of its own equivalence class, e of x. So every x is going to be in at least one of these equivalence classes, basically. And now what we want to do is uh, prove that um, prove that we can um, build a nice uh, partition of our set from this. So basically, what I've shown you so far is that we have these equivalence classes which are all disjoint, basically. So no element is in more than one equivalence class. Uh, but we can't just take the set of all the equivalence classes of every single element. If we took the set of equivalence classes of little x such that little x was an element of x, we'd get far too many sets is the actual reality. I know I said at the beginning that we were going to sort of use that as our um, partition, uh, but that's a slight lie because uh, we'd end up with loads of copies of the same set if we use this definition. So what we want to do is just pick one representative from each equivalence class. So I want e of x to be in there, but then I want you to omit the equivalence classes of all the elements that x is related to. So I don't want you to put in this equivalence class again, because if you put in, let's say, little y, which is over here, and you put in its equivalence class as well, you've got the same equivalence class twice, because this one's equal to this one. So I don't want you to do that. So just pick one representative from each equivalence class, and um, you and you know write that equivalence class out and put all of these sets of disjoint equivalence classes together that will form your partition of the set and the reason um and the reason that it covers the whole set is because every element has to be in at least one of those uh, because it's in its own equivalence class and its own equivalence class will be one of these. Um, and uh, similarly, uh, well, sorry, uh, the other property of uh, a partition is that uh, non, no two of them need can, must overlap. They must all be disjoint. Uh, and we've shown that basically no, no element can be in more than one equivalence class because if it was in the other equivalence class as well, then it would imply that the equivalence, the two equivalence classes were one equivalence class, basically. Okay, uh, so that's the concept of how we can define equivalence relations on a set. In the next video, what we'll do is do a quick example of this, and uh, then we will apply it to the problem of uh, turning a pseudo-metric space into a metric space.